This is Matt Hurt at Obsessive Viewer on Twitter. This is Mike White, and you can find me at I am Mike White on Twitter. And this is ObsessiveViewer.com's The Obsessive Viewer Podcast. And welcome to The Obsessive Viewer, where a movie and TV podcast that covers a specific topic, be it genre, trope, movie, or show, each episode. You can find more of our work at ObsessiveViewer.com and more podcasts presented by Obsessive Viewer at ObsessiveViewer.com slash podcasts. And you can also like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Obsessive Viewer. And if you'd like to support what we do here monetarily, um, you can become a patron at Patreon.com slash Obsessive Viewer, where if you uh, pledge $1 per month, you'll have access to over 130 exclusive B-roll episodes recorded specifically for Patreon. Then at the $2 level, you get that plus TV reviews that I do. So recently I did an episode by episode weekly recap of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And I also re- reviewed season one of Rutherford Falls, the complete series of Superstore. And I am going to be doing weekly recaps of Loki and Lisey's story on Apple TV+. Plus. So again, that's at the $2 level. And then if you pledge $5 per month, you get access to all of that, plus movie commentary tracks that I record. Shooting for recording three a month. I've got commentary tracks for uh, Ex Machina, Sunshine, The Shining, Doctor Sleep, uh, Throne of Blood, It Chapter too. I have a ton of stuff up there. <laughs> and uh, finally, at the $10 per month level, you get uh, all of that plus early access to episodes before they release on the main feed. So I'm um, very excited about this, that here on May 21st, if you pledge, if you are, are on our $10 level, you'll get full access to all seven of my next bonus episode series on Anthology. That if you don't pledge $10 per month, you'll just get that week to week. So Okay, so that's my Patreon spiel. Um, again, that's at patreon.com slash obsessive viewer. And uh, yeah, so I'm your host, the aforementioned Matt Hurt. And with me today is Michael White, one of the OG obsessive viewer um, uh, 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 hosts. And uh, he is a musician extraordinaire, father extraordinaire. Um, oh, man. And a man of many, uh, many hats uh and headphones. i do <laughs> yeah. i have so many hats yes yes it's one of my i don't know if you're i i don't know if you're referencing that but it's one mm. of the things i collect like physical hats yeah like baseball oh, caps. okay yeah no i was just meaning yeah. that you have your irons and a lot of fires and well i do yeah i, I do have irons and many fires mm. fingers in all the flavors of pies but uh, one of them is also collecting hats, nice. uh, caps, baseball caps. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a pretty vast collection. Sweet. Uh, Matt is watching me on video, but I have uh, mm-hmm. I just got a couple of Bears caps. Nice. Uh, I ordered a Bears cap today that I'm excited about. Yeah, I love I love hats. Sweet. And not, not because I'm losing my hair. I was mm-hmm. a, I was a hat guy even before that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Man, you did your pitch, and I yeah. wanted to say. <laughs> I kind of like lost the thread a little bit, but I wanted to say that, um, you know, you got a new mixer, so you're Mm -hmm. playing the theme song for us, Mm -hmm. whereas before you would just drop it in in editing. Right. And so I haven't heard that. I only hear it like if I listen to an episode, Mm -hmm. which is really just like the year end. And why would you do that? (laughs) Right. Um, Yeah, I saw a tweet one time that said like, the only people who listen to podcasts they're on are psychopaths. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, shoot. I, I listened to one or two. No comments. Yeah. <laughs> no, anyway. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> the groove of that song, man. Mm. I, I love that that song is our is our intro. Is, oh, is the me theme too. That you chose. Oh, yeah. Um, Because it's so like every time we're, we we do it, I like play the draw the air mm. drums along with yeah. it i think it's such a good uh, oh, uh choice i love it and i was gonna ask you at some point i was gonna ask you is loud like still making music and stuff are they still doing their thing oh i don't know okay are um, they aware of us at all are they aware that their music is <laughs> uh, is associated you know, with our podcast like as an entity i'm not sure so uh the drummer of that band uh uh 
is a, is an ex cousin in law. Okay, uh, so he was married, formerly married to my wife's cousin, oh. uh, and they aren't anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a bummer. I I love both of them, and mm-hmm. and I love Amanda's cousin as well. So no hard feelings or anything. Yeah. Um. But he knew because he was the one I I asked officially if we could use that song. So, of course, he knew. I'm not sure if the band as an entity was (laughs) was aware. (laughs) He would I think he would share. A couple of episodes. Okay, like early on when we started Mm. uh, when we started using the song. Nice. (laughs) Um, But yeah, he knows I I miss him a lot. He, Mm. He played drums for me. Uh, for a little while nice. and uh, still a great great human being they they kind of just went their separate ways I, I almost even feel bad like telling their story now oh, but yeah. um just kind of out of respect for for family I, I, i've kind of lost contact with him a little bit gotcha so. jared okay. if you're listening i still love you I, I hope the best for you and i don't know you but i love you too because your music is uh in my head a considerable yeah. amount of time when i do make the podcast <laughs> Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, it's funny. So like, I didn't want to tip my hat on this or anything, but it's funny that we're on the subject because uh, you have a Kickstarter that is that is that that is, you're getting kickstarted, and uh, one I of do. the and yeah. I'll I'll let you go do your whole spiel and everything, but I did want to mention sure. that there is a level on that Kickstarter at I believe it's fifty dollars that is where you will write and perform a song. Yes. tailored to the backer and like i have like in my head i'm like i'm gonna i'm gonna back that i'm gonna make him make oh, a awesome. new theme music for the podcast oh shoot yeah, yeah. so that's i don't awesome. want to put you on the spot okay. here but that's coming and yeah oh man <laughs> yeah. well first of all thank you that's, oh, of that's course. awesome oh yeah um you know what's funny so i'll, I'll do the pitch and everything mm-hmm. but i've had a few close friends and very generous friends i love you matt thank you mm. thank you for saying that oh. who have like already been like yeah i'm totally doing the 50 dollar, mm-hmm. and we capped it at six yeah because we're like we can't we can't yeah. write 20 songs right people, you know what i'm saying oh yeah so we're like six is doable we can mm. write six, three minute songs <laughs> um <clears throat> so maybe i don't know like I want the money, right? Oh, sorry, I want the financial <laughs> yeah. support, but also like, I'm I'm gonna get to a point where I'm like buried in songs that yeah. I have to write. You're people. gonna have to make a whole fucking album of songs. I know. I, the, I mean, which at could this be point, amazing. Yeah. It could, and I and I, if I could cheat a little bit, I, I guess I'll confess on here. Mm. Um, we do have a few like riffs and parts. Mm-hmm. That we will kind of like present to those potential backers nice. and say, "Hey, the, if you like this riff, we could build something around it." But okay, I, I, I want to to the to the people who uh, are willing to do that tier. I, I definitely mm-hmm. want to give them uh, as much control over it as possible. Nice, of nice. Well, <laughs> so, I will be a complete diva about it and everything. <laughs> yeah, it will be yeah. all about pizza. Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Whatever you want, man. Yeah. But I was like, my intention was to think, like, okay, I could. Like, For $50, I'll let yeah. you draw all over my back. <laughs> I'll let you do that for free. <laughs> but. You can cut that out if you want. I, I don't know. I might. I'm. It depends. It might. I might. Sorry, but, sorry, um, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's fine. <laughs> Um, but like my, my intention is to pledge that so that you could create a new opening theme music for the podcast. Not that I'm, mm. not that I don't want that. Cause that is such a, like, I, I love, uh, 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 wow. What is the name of the track? Um, it's from their EP mistakes we must make loud. Life. Yeah. Loud um, like, oh, it's hang on. I think it's called viewing obsessively. I think so. <laughs> Well, I think it's called watching shows and stuff like an <laughs> apostrophe. It's a uh, <laughs> it's a bunch of jackasses do- going on tangents for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a Welcome very to weird our tangent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a very it's a very. Uh, I think it had like some kind of existential thing. I don't know, but anyway, because um, I I've I've listened to that song. Oh, an eclipse of events. Yeah, 
Um, that's right. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's interesting because like I've like recent fairly recently I've like listened to that song itself, and it's so weird because it's so associated with the podcast that yeah. listening to the actual like with the tr- vocals and everything is like is is a little weird. Um, I love. I, it is a little weird, but I love yeah. that stuff. I, I mm-hmm. still, I might have even said this on the podcast, but like when I hear Coding, Coheed and Cambria's A Favor House Atlantic, mm-hmm. have I talked about this? I don't think so. It, it was my like text tone and ringtone oh, for the first yeah. tone I ever got. Do you remember mm-hmm. that? Uh, vaguely, vaguely. Yeah. And then again, well, yeah, go, go my ahead. freshman year, like with you of college, mm-hmm. um, so, by the way, if you're following along on your obsessive viewer bingo, right. yes. I've mentioned that I play music. We've <laughs> talked about freshman year. Yes. We've, we've made, done a tangent. We've Somebody's done a tangent. got bing already. Made, made, a, made a random reference that may or may not uh, get cut out of the episode that has <laughs> <laughs> that is completely out of context. That is only for us. <laughs> we've mentioned pizza. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way, though. I would not have it any Sorry, other way. No, you're good. Oppose myself. <laughs> Listeners are like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But yes. <laughs> uh. Anyway. Anyway. So, so our freshman yeah. year, that was when I got my first cell phone. Mm-hmm. I was trying out uh, uh uh ringtones, and I had a favorite house Atlantic. Uh, at the same time, my girlfriend and I were seeing ourselves out of uh, the relationship that we were in mm-hmm. eventually at the end of the year. Yeah. And just like when she would call, I'd be like, ah. Oh, like interesting. Such, I was not a good boyfriend. I, I have said that <laughs> on record many times. And I have said that to her since. Mm-hmm. I was not a good girlfriend or boyfriend, and mm-hmm. I apologize. But like we'd be but playing But you were a good Halo. roommate, though, and that's what I appreciate. Well, that's what matters most yes. of that time. But I'd be playing Halo and she would like text <laughs> or call and I would hear that song and I'd get like chills oh, down yeah. my neck. I'd be like, oh, I got, <laughs> sorry guys, I gotta go hang out with my girlfriend. Uh, anyway, that's, yeah. that's a bad story. That makes mm. me sad. Oh, no, it's bad. But then, and then you had this asshole roommate that anytime he got a text, you would hear, hey! Hey! <laughs> Yeah. Um, I yeah. do love that song though. Still, oh, me too. Very much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just terrified <laughs> right. pizza. Anyway, so go ahead. So your Kickstarter. spiel, Kickstarter. <laughs> so I, I, I hate to sound like I'm on this episode to promote. I, I, we've been trying, I've been trying to get on the show uh, last couple of weeks, but I've been so busy working on this Kickstarter that I haven't had time. So, we're doing an extended potpourri yes. with kind of a bit of an asterisk mm-hmm. of me of me pitching my Kickstarter. Yes. Uh, cause this it's very near and dear to my heart. I'm super excited about this. Uh so it's also uh my par- my partner Dustin and I, we are in a band called As Good As It Gets. Mm-hmm. Uh by the way, Dustin, you can listen to him on our WandaVision episode. Yes. Um, so anyway, we've been in a band for a long time, uh, since 2014, we've been playing as a two piece, but we actually started a band in high school in 2001 called Thank You Jade. That band released uh, a couple of EPs and a full length record, uh, and broke up in 2011. We played our last show. Now, Ernest Hemingway said, you got to kill your darlings. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't like to kill my darlings. I have kept my darlings uh, in a in a satchel all these years. And so all of those songs that Thank You Jade used to play, we were a, we were a pop punk band mm-hmm. in that early 2000s vein. Um, all of the songs we used to play, I loved them so much. And we just like never had the money to record those songs because mm-hmm. uh, we were an independent band. I mean, we were we were mostly a local band. Yeah. Uh, and so that band broke up and they were something like 20 to 25, maybe 30 songs that we never got around to recording. Uh, and a couple of years ago, Dustin and I were working on one of our own albums. And like as I was waiting for like the next wave of inspiration on an album, I would play one of our old songs. Mm hmm. And then we work on a new one and I would mess around with another old song. <clears throat> and I got to a point where I felt like I was good enough at recording that I could, uh, that I could record us as mm-hmm. thank you, Jade. And so nice. I said to Dustin, <clears throat> excuse me. I said, how do you feel about putting out a thank you, Jade record of all our songs we meant to put out, but never got a chance to. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, well, 
I'm okay with that as long as we put it out as as good as it gets. So mm-hmm. uh, it, it's an as good as it gets record, but there it uh, we're calling it the Spirit of the Stairs. Thank mm-hmm. you, Jade's the Spirit of the Stairs. The Spirit of the Stairs uh, is a French term. It's the English translation of a French term for uh, that feeling where like you leave a conversation and an argument, and the thing that would have been perfect to say comes to you later. Yes, yes, that's the Spirit of the Staircase. Uh, and so this album is called The Spirit of the Staircase, nice. and uh, we are releasing it through Kickstarter. So Kickstarter, if you're unfamiliar with, is a crowdfunding campaign website where artists, creators, entrepreneurs will put their product uh, on a page, on a website, and you can back that thing up front and... Uh, to help that thing be funded with the promise of getting that product if the thing is funded. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to do that with our record because with uh, a record that represents nostalgia and music from the past, we wanted to bring back that CD feeling of listening to music. So um, I know that streaming is like the way to go. Every As Good As It Gets release has been exclusively streaming. But with this Thank You Jade thing, with this The Spirit of the Staircase, we really wanted it to be on physical media. So our Kickstarter is the CD release of The Spirit of the Staircase. So this episode uh, that you're listening to, I think is going to air on Friday. Yes. And so I'm announcing this to our email list yesterday. So that's thursday the 13th uh yeah. and so it's kind of public knowledge not a secret but mm-hmm. the the campaign launches on the 20th okay. and you can find all the information you need at as good as it gets music.com nice. or just go to kickstarter.com and search as good as it gets so again Sweet. as good as it gets music.com or search for as good as it gets spirit of the staircase on Kickstarter. So on that thing, we're offering three tiers. Yes. Uh, the first tier is just $10 and it's just the CD with 13 tracks. <laughs> By the way, that's 13 tracks. And the streaming version of the album is only going to be 11 tracks. Ooh. So you get actually a, a bonus two songs. It's like nice. kind of a short one minute, uh, fast punk rock song. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you'll get a, a redone version of a song we actually released in the past with kind of a new chorus to it. So that's at the $10 level at the $13 level, you get the CD and then we're also recording an acoustic version of the album. So 10 songs from the album, acoustic. you get a digital download of that. We have typed up all the lyrics and annotated them. So like told the stories of the songs as well as like we list each song on a PDF mm-hmm. and tell about <clears throat> almost like a director's commentary of like the writing of those songs, uh, the, the like the first playing of those songs, maybe why we never recorded those songs, that sort mm-hmm. of thing. Uh, and then you also get an as good as it gets sticker and a thank you Jade sticker uh, for all your trouble. And I think we'll throw Sweet. in like a, like a, a, a thank you Jade demo along mm-hmm. with that. So that's the that's the deluxe version at the twenty dollar level, God, and then at the awesome. fifty dollar level, which mm-hmm. I think is a pretty good deal, mm-hmm. uh, you get that you get the twenty dollar package, plus uh, you and I will write a song together. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a song shop, and so I will write a song exclusively for you. We won't release it unless you want to. We won't profit off of it except for what you pay us for that tier but uh <laughs> so we'll get together you can give me whatever input you want like if you're you know a, a a mediocre guitar player you can show me some chords uh you can give me a poem some lyrics a melody you had in mind and you and i will craft a song uh and then you uh, of course you get the spirit of the state case so that's 50 dollars. Mm-hmm. so um I'd love to answer any questions you have about this. You can you can email us at as good as gets music uh, at gmail.com. You can talk to me personally. Uh, I'm really trying to get the word out about this as much as possible. I love releasing new music. I have loved some of these songs for close to 20 years, so I'm so excited to have these out there. It launches officially on May 20th. 
So Thursday, May 20th, we have 30 days to reach our, what I believe is a modest goal of $600. Nice. Uh, yeah. So if you look at Kickstarter, a lot of them are $1,000, $1,500, um, pretty hefty. So a lot of Kickstarter projects I have found are like, they want you to fund the recording of an album, oh. like a promise that an album is going to happen. But these songs are done. They're mm. recorded. Like, I'm sending them to my guy to mix them. You are really just pre-ordering the thing. You mm -hmm. you are essentially paying to have the CD pressed, so we don't press it beforehand. Uh, nice. If I if I could speak candidly about why we're doing the Kickstarter. Oh yeah, your so funding will pay uh, uh, part of the shipping. You shipping is included in your, mm -hmm. or there is additional shipping in the ten dollars. Uh, and then you're also paying for our shipping costs on our end, as well as the distribution costs, uh, and to press the CDs. Nice. Uh, and, and then hopefully, hopefully it'll be funded. I think six hundred dollars yeah. is low. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty stoked on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Spirit of the Stair, as good as it gets. Music. Dot com. The Patreon is still around, so that's on mm -hmm. there. I post YouTube cover videos all the time. Nice. That's my. This is my long-winded pitch. Uh, if you're a longtime listener of Obsessive Viewer, thank you for sitting through that. I promise we'll talk about movies and stuff. But, yeah, uh, maybe. I'm very excited about this. Yeah, I'm, maybe we'll get around. To yeah, I am. I'm extremely excited for you. And I like Thanks, I have. Man. Thank oh, you. yeah. Like I've, I've been a huge supporter of everything you do, obviously, since we met. And uh, I've said this before and I'll say it many times, I'm sure. But I just remember that distinct feeling of like messaging you on like AOL instant messenger before we met and just like getting to know each other on that. And then like finding out that you were in a band and like sitting there thinking like, fuck, I really hope that I like his music. <laughs> like <laughs> I would be tortured, yeah. but I genuinely, genuinely uh, love your music and admire oh, thanks, like man. your, your musical talents and everything. Um, oh, thank you. So yeah. So I'm super excited for, for this next stage of, of, um, yeah, uh, no pun intended. Next stage. Um, <laughs> this, uh, uh, this next part of your your journey of music. Thanks. Yeah, I, I you know, this was. Um, I kind of joke that it's twenty years in the making because mm -hmm. this this October will be Thank You Jade's twenty year anniversary. Wow, which is crazy. Dustin mm -hmm. and I have been in a band together for twenty years. God, that's uh, nuts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on and off a little bit. We took a few hiatuses but uh mm -hmm. wait he and i've been playing music and writing songs together for 20 years that's um, awesome yeah i love these songs a lot um i'm excited to see it's it's almost kind of just like a heat check i just want to mm -hmm. see if we have enough people interested to sell enough of these cds uh and then that will kind of dictate how the the next phase to kind of use your term the mm -hmm. next stage of the band uh, because if we are able to fund this thing and people are interested and we make a little bit of money, uh, we already have, <clears throat> excuse me, the next EP written. It's nice. Done. Uh, and so we'll, we'll uh, we're hoping, I'm hoping, uh, we can turn around and record that thing and, and have, uh, new music mm -hmm. that nobody's heard before, Sweet. uh, out by the end of the year. Nice, nice. So, so yeah. to put it into into words that our listeners will understand, everything <laughs> for the la from the last twenty years leading up to this Kickstarter has been your Infinity Saga. That's and right. And then once that's done, you're going to have <laughs> you're yeah. going to have your Disney Plus shows um, with the EP at the end of the year. And then after that, that's right. Phase Four and <laughs> all of this stuff. That's um, right. That's exactly so, yeah. how we've described it. The nice. YouTube is just episodes of the show. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh, uh, so what I what I meant to say, 20 mm -hmm. years in the making. Uh, and then this specific project, recording them, is uh, a, a thing I came up with about three years ago. Okay. Uh, started recording two years ago, planned to release last summer, and then, of course, COVID hit. Right. So um, we've been sitting on this thing. We we kind of finished the last of the tracking mm -hmm. a week ago, a uh, week and a half ago, and uh, I'm so excited. Uh, there's there's one 
uh, one new song on okay. it. Okay. That, that Thank You Jade never actually played live, uh, but it was one that Dustin and I wrote for the band uh, okay. and just never like got around to finishing. Oh, okay. Uh, so The Ballad of Matt Hurt. That's right. That's actually what it's called. <laughs> nice, nice. It's a piano. Yeah. It's a piano song. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, uh, so it's called Monsters Never Die. Okay. Uh, and actually, it will also come out next Thursday. Nice. So we hit, that's, a, that's a little sneak peek. We're, we're launching the Kickstarter and also uh, releasing a single and a video to YouTube on Thursday at the same time. God, Monsters that's fucking nine. awesome. I'm super yeah. excited for you. Thanks, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm so glad to like <laughs> To feel your excitement coming back. Oh, I, yeah. I am excited about it. And I don't like, you know, we're such a small. As fun as this has been, Dustin and I, and we've mm. been as good as it gets for like seven years, which is Jeez. crazy that we've still yeah. been at it uh, this long. We are so DIY. Oh, think. yeah. So independent. We We play. You know, I play one show, two shows a year. We come out of the word works every now and then. It, it, you know, it's more hobby than a professional thing. So, mm -hmm. um, but just to he like, we're putting this out for friends. We're putting mm -hmm. this out for like fans who liked Thank You Jade. Any anybody, you know, I'm under no pretense that this is going to be like, like we're going to make it from mm -hmm. putting out these punk rock songs from 2003 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, what I'm hoping for, if I could be candid, mm -hmm. is a little bit of validation, you know, a little bit of like, hey, yeah, you're 35, mm -hmm. but keep going. Why not? Or, yeah. Like, or why not would feel okay. Like, just keep playing. Yeah. Or in other words, uh, uh, a little bit of, hey, you're 35 years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I got to tell you, you got to give me space so I can breathe. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, that, that's Bingo. Bingo. nice. <laughs> uh, shout out to uh, U USI Governor's Hall, room 106. Burr, 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 burr. Um, <laughs> as good as it gets music.com. Yes, go there for I all just of your it a couple weeks ago. Nice, go there for all of your as good as it gets music needs and everything. And everything. uh, I can, I can cut this out if you want to, but did you ever look into setting up T Public, a merch store? We, I haven't yet. Okay. I haven't. Um, uh, my worry for that was that um, the shipping on it would get out of control. Like, as fun as it would be to, I guess, unless they ship it from T Public. They ship it from T Public. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. So like, so to, just to I'll look into it for the next one. Yeah. Just, just to give you an overview, like we have a T public store where you can get obsessive viewer merch. Um, basically that is a store that's online in perpetuity, um, with our logo designs and stuff. You click buy a shirt, buy a mug, phone cases, mask, whatever. And T public ships it directly to you. You pay shipping and you know, at the price and everything, and then there's nothing on our end that we have to do to facilitate that. It's just boom. Um, so yeah. So just to give an overview and everything, but yeah. Um, so yeah. So well, it's good to know. Yeah. So anyway, check out as good as it gets Kickstarter and uh, let's, let's keep, let's, let's keep it moving. Let's get, let's get Mike and Dustin onto the, to the top 10 billboard charting stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. If that's the thing with music. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah let's let's get them at the top of the box office um for music i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah we could you could put this you could put monsters never die on the uh on the hot 100 yes uh spirit of the staircase on the on the top 200 let's do it sweet let's do yes. it and then somewhere i will say there so the amount that we've accounted for it amount accounts for a certain number of CDs. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we sell more than that, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's going to mess up our numbers a little bit. Oh, so really? I, do, I do have a number in mind that mm -hmm. um, there's a number we need. Mm -hmm. And then there's a number where it would be awesome. And yeah. then there's a number where I, I we kind of like can't sell more than. 
Okay. Well, let's get <laughs> let's get you guys to that number. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, that's a good problem to have, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. So once again, as good as it gets music dot com. All of your as good as it gets music needs. Love um, it. Yep. Yes. And uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't know how to transition out of. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's just switch. Let's just talk about movies. Okay. Um, yes. Here's something I want to talk about. Okay. Can, I, can we talk yeah. about something? Oh yeah. So Are just you... real quick, just to just to reset us and everything, we're going to be doing extended potpourri this episode. <laughs> Oh, yes. So extended potpourri where we just it, it's the it's funny. So uh, a potpourri is the section of the podcast where we talk about whatever we want, kind of usually it's to wind down the episode. Mike, I think I've mentioned this before and I don't know if you remember it, but you're the one who actually christened the tagline of it. Uh, whatever we want, as long as it smells good. As long as it smells good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So um, we're going to do a full length extended potpourri section here. So, Mike, hit me with your first topic or title or what have you for our extended potpourri discussion okay so the what i want to talk about is just being back in the theater yes we are both fully vaccinated um for the record we're both fully vaccinated yes both shots plus the the two weeks. Yes. Uh, and you are, you, and you, you're resuming your um, movie night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Movie so night is back. How has that been? How has that a whole experience been going back to the movie theater? Well, um, as with everything, uh, mixed results. Okay. Um, the experience of going back. So like the feeling of getting in the car Picking up Jake, mm-hmm. st- get buying Reese's pieces at the counter. <laughs> that has been great. The you know the smell, mm-hmm. right? Kind kind of that a uh, uh, proverbial smell yes. of of a theater when you walk in has mm-hmm. been great. Sitting in the seats, all like the feeling was back. Um, the movies have not been great. Sure, they it's it's been a lot of. Um, we didn't. I didn't. Wasn't on the Godzilla vs. King Kong review. Right. I really didn't like that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but did you like my exclusive interview with Eminem? I died. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was something. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, and then we saw nobody, which I did like. Okay. But it felt. It felt very like. In a better year, we might not have even gone to see that movie. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, in yeah. a stronger April, mm-hmm. we wouldn't have had, we wouldn't uh, have seen that one. Yeah. Uh, I, and then we saw Mortal Kombat, which mm-hmm. is mixed feelings. Yeah. Um, and then we saw Nomadland, which was mm. fantastic, but not, I mean, it wasn't like, a, a fun adventure so sure it's it's been um we haven't seen that one like oh man, this is why we do it like blow the doors kind of off right. movie experience right yeah and even when they're not even when it's not like you know the best ones are ones you don't expect and just blow you away i mm-hmm. think of like the early like the town was like the earliest one that did that oh nice um, even even like the big Marvel ones we know are going to be good mm-hmm. feel like events, like yeah. big horror movies we're excited for. Mm-hmm. That feels like an event where we get to have the event and have movie night simultaneously. Yeah. We have our cake and eat it too. Um, <clears throat> that we haven't had that okay. fun movie yet. Interesting. Mortal I... Kombat was fun, but yeah. Mortal Not Kombat was movie. better than I expected it to be. Yeah, me too. But me I think too. for for like me, and I said this on, on the review, that was the first time Tiny and I had seen a movie in the theater since December 12th, 2019. Um, so it had been over 400 days since he and I had seen a movie in the theater together. Together, okay. Yeah, th- yeah. Th- yeah that's what I meant. And... Uh, and, and the movie we saw December 12th, 2019 was the rise of Skywalker. So oh, geez. there's yeah. that. Um, yeah, but it, it's, 
it's something really uh, um, unpredictable, and in the end, it's right. Uh, I really hope you had the time of your life. No, um, <laughs> it's we did. Nice, nice. Um, and then this pandemic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This. Um, but like going back to the movie theater and like being back, like I totally get that. I've had that same experience, that same feeling. Um, yesterday, I had the intention of doing my first double feature in the theater since pre-pandemic days. Um, I got through the first movie and I was just like, eh, I don't really feel like waiting around for an hour for the next movie. And that's a big factor, really. Yeah. The closer oh, yeah. you can kind of butt those together, mm-hmm. the better. Oh yeah. And the second movie I was going to see was Nobody. And like nothing against Bob Odenkirk, nothing against that movie. I think in the right in the right um with the right mindset, I think I would be more interested in it and be more you will like for it. it. Nice. You will like it. Yeah. But the, and I'll probably, I'll talk about this later. This won't be my pick yet because I think we might have some more theater stuff to talk about. But the movie that I did see was uh, uh, Together Together uh, with Ed Helms and Patty Harrison. And like to go from that, it, it's a very charming, uh, like uh, character relationship study. Uh, to something like nobody, uh, that would been that would have been too much of a shift in tone for me. I think so. So yeah, so baby steps. Yeah, yeah. toward uh, double features and stuff. Um, but I don't know if this is what you want to talk about next. But you did have. I'm a... excited for double features. Oh, we yeah. had. Well, I think our last double feature. I might be skipping an important one, mm. but we were uh, kind of before things got crappy with that pandemic. Mm-hmm. We were trying to see as many as we we were trying to double up often. Oh yeah, because um, we really wanted to try to pair our ten year anniversary with our five hundredth movie. Yeah, that's which right. Now obviously didn't happen. Right, ten years would have been last August. God, that um, sucks so much. I know. I know. Yeah. We we uh, uh, if I'm being honest, I don't think we would have made it. I don't oh, think we yeah. would have lied. It was we mm. had to do a lot of work. It, it right. was so, so it was March. I think we had to do something like 40 movies Jeez. in 20 something weeks and it oh, would have just been Yeah. I mean, it's not that many, but we would have had to do like 10 double features. Sure. It, just, it didn't feel feasible yeah anyway our, our, one of the best double features was our killer doll double feature when we saw the the chucky remake and annabelle comes home on the same day oh nice that's awesome just to pair together mm-hmm. like a like have a that thematic a... pairing yes is right. very nice oh yeah yeah uh, yeah um, I almost made the analogy like dinner with wine like I know oh, anything right. about wine like right. I've ever tasted wine sure. <laughs> uh where were we <laughs> <laughs> something about movies yes um so we're talking about double features yes um i'm i mentioned you had another question movie night movie night double features double back feature. on track oh. trying to hit 500 yes so if we if, if uh, i was going to say i don't know if this is what you wanted the next topic to be but um, you also hit recently a big milestone in movie watching in your universe. Um, young Howie had his first theater yeah. experience, right? Yes, he did. Yes. yes, he did. So for longtime listeners, you guys have already heard about Oscar's first movie theater experience with Toy Story 4 um, Correct. a while back. Um so now to kind of to to continue the tradition, Mike, let's regale us with your with your younger son's first theater experience. Yeah, it was so great. Nice. Um, so let's see. I guess Howie would be a couple months older than Oscar was. Okay. For, for his first movie. For a so, second, for a second, I thought you were saying, I guess Howie is, uh, he's about... A little like, older than Oscar nowadays. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I thought you were trying to remember how old he is, just in general. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, what I are you doing? Guess, I guess Howie is my <laughs> son. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> not to get off on a tangent, but that side by side picture you had of you and your brother um, yeah. as kids with Oscar and Howie 
was like it was adorable and everything yeah like i i guess i guess i'm so whenever i see pictures of like people's kids and everything i'm just i kind of blow past them sure but yeah since since you and i are such good friends and everything i'm just like i look at them and i'm like oh i, I like it's i love family. seeing yeah I lo- right. exactly yeah. And I swear, I was going to comment on it, but I didn't get around to it. But I scrolled through it, and like it, my brain, I couldn't understand what it was because it said uh, the White Brothers in uh, whatever year, and then the White Brothers in 2021. Yeah, some of my captions are a little well, cryptic, and I don't well, no, mean them to be. No, no, no. It made perfect sense once I did it. But the reason that it didn't click with me is that I was like – this is just two side by side pictures of your kids. <laughs> like I couldn't, I, I couldn't see. like for a second, I couldn't differentiate between you and Kevin and Oscar and Howie. And I, th- I thought that was just, it, it warmed yeah. my heart. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. I, I kind of refer to us as like the white bros, mm-hmm. gen one and gen two. Nice. Uh, and I, nice. and I don't know that I like make that clear to everybody or like they see that we look so much like Oscar and Howie that it's easy to like confuse the two. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I can see that that is, that that's sometimes confusing. I yeah. mean, we, Kevin and I, Kevin has, uh, like some old Sears photos. Mm. Like, we're posed and, and like doing the whole everything. Nice. And, uh, we <clears throat> ask Oscar, who is this? And he's like, that's Howie. <laughs> oh. that? That's me. That's Oscar. And oh. I'm like, hey, that's your dad. That's me. Right. <laughs> And it, it, there are some pictures I could send where it's crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's uncanny, the resemblance. And so that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, fatherhood is 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 one of my great joy, probably the greatest mm-hmm. joy in my life. It's it's so awesome. But there there is a special quality uh, that I take great pride in of growing up with a younger brother and then having two boys mm-hmm. myself. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I think I've talked before about how important it is to me to have a brother and just like that there's nobody who like understands what it's like to be you mm-hmm. more than your brother yeah. would. Someone you Right? You've... I mean, the same... Yeah. Same life experience up to a certain point. I mean, you right. you understand each other's childhood like no one else. Mm-hmm. And so I like kind of imparting that wisdom mm-hmm. uh, onto my own sons. Not nice. this. Like, by all means, <laughs> don't tell Howie I said this. Mm-hmm. We, like, wanted a daughter for a second kid. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh it's pretty. It's pretty special having two boys, nice. and um, um, I love. I love posting that that side by side stuff. That's awesome. It's it's funny because my sister, she every time she has she's she's about to have her fourth child, and it, it's a lot of kids. It's a lot of kids. Oh yeah, That's a lot of kids. Yeah, and um, like I made that. So she told me that she was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go to the doctor, and um, I'm hoping that they'll like." figure like i am uh, i'm hoping that they'll tell me that they will induce me on friday so i can have the kid and everything because she's like at that point in her pregnancy and then so like the joke i made was like okay so, so okay so if you're induced on friday that means his birthday will be probably 14th or 15th so then by about <laughs> june 20th you'll be pregnant again is that right <laughs> oh dang <laughs> Uh, and I weirdly enough, I haven't talked to my sister since then. I don't know. Yeah, she never got back to <laughs> no. you. No, uh, follow. But no, but no. Um, so anyway, but oh, oh, sorry. What I was saying was that she is about to have her fourth child. Each time she has wanted a girl, each time it's been a boy. Oh. And my brother's wife is due with their first child in I think July, and it's going to be a girl. And he wanted a boy. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am just like, hey, uh, <laughs> yeah, none. I'm yeah. good with none. <laughs> I don't, I guess I should say, I, uh, not that we, there was no disappointment. Like, oh, we didn't yeah, want of course. a girl. Oh, yeah. I just thought it would be cool to have, to have, uh, mm-hmm. to have both. But yeah. I, I do love having two. Yeah. So anyway. So Howie's first theater experience. Howie's first. So my, so Howie turned three in March and Oscar will be five in a month nice. uh, in June. And uh, so in 2019, we took Oscar a couple days shy, I think, of his third birthday. Okay. 
or maybe a couple days after his third birthday. Sensor. And so Howie is three years and what, two months. Mm-hmm. So he's a little bit older than Oscar was. And Oscar, it wasn't the it wasn't a sterling first movie experience with Oscar. He he got scared of the dark. He got tired of it. Howie, uh, and not to compare the two, mm-hmm. but I'm going to, I guess, loved it. He was great. Nice. Oh, it was awesome. It was so awesome. So it was Mother's Day. Uh, it was a rainy day, so we were we were talking about going to Holiday World, but we decided to get tickets and go see Raya and the Last Dragon mm-hmm. instead. So we went as a whole family. We we got the works. I mean, we got Amanda and I split a large popcorn and a large drink. Mm-hmm. We got the boys each their own little kids combo. We got a pack of Reese's Pieces. We got a pack of M and M's. It was awesome. Like, uh, feast we went we went out we're pretty big we don't do a whole lot of like snack and junk food at the house Mm -hmm. Uh, amanda's not a big fan but like we wanted to do it if we're going to the theater we gotta do it up oh yeah we did so um tangent if i may Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's our thing (laughs) when jake Jake and i saw mortal Kombat, there Mm. was a young ish dad with two young boys okay. uh, who was taking them to Mortal Kombat. And as we were right. getting our snacks, like a woman behind us said, oh, what are you guys seeing? And I just like, not that it's special or whatever, but I was mm-hmm. like glad that I could say, oh, we're seeing the kids movie. Right. Raya and the Last Dragon. Yeah. You know, because we're decent parents. <laughs> right. <laughs> and just this guy taking his kids oh, to see God. Mortal Kombat. Anyway. Yeah. So we get in there. Got four seats, and uh, Howie wants to sit on my lap during the movie. And it's so he had his little his little drink, doing the popcorn, asking kind of another Eminem, asking questions about the movie, and I'm kind of like, shut up. I didn't say shut up to my kid, but <laughs> right. just I was like, Howie, shut up, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. He got a little squirmy. The movie, mm-hmm. the movie sags a little bit in the middle. I don't think we'll do a review of the movie here, but oh, yeah. um, he got a little squirmy. But like Oscar, who again is almost five, kind of a couple seats down, sat to Amanda's right, was just glued like the whole time mm-hmm. on. <laughs> like I ate the last of the M and M's, and he's like, "Daddy, can I have an M and M's?" I was like, "Ah, they're gone." And he's uh-huh. like. Are you kidding? <laughs> He's uh, like, you motherfucker. Did you I really did, just yeah. eat all of <laughs> He's like, I can't take you anywhere. <laughs> so it was fun. They liked it. They nice. did it was um they didn't do like the little kid like talk nonstop about it afterwards. Good. Good. Yeah. Oh, afterwards. Yeah. Afterwards. Okay. Afterwards, afterwards. I thought you meant during. Yeah. I was like, oh, mm. okay. Oh no, during they I mean, Oscar was silent, and and Howie really only got squirrely for a little bit. God, that's awesome! It was. It was um, a really, really positive experience. Nice. Do you yeah. feel like any type of? I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if jealousy is the right word, but do you ever oh, feel I have like another, I have another oh, one to tell you? But go okay. ahead, go ahead. Um, I, I was just gonna say, just really briefly, do you ever? Do you feel like kind of uh, a kind of generational thing where it's like you? You kids have like these like photorealistic visual effects laden animated stuff that looks just incredible. And like you grew up in like the era of 2D animation and everything. I I understand your question mm-hmm. and I and I get why that's a, a reasonable question. But we grew up with excellent movies. I yeah, mean like that's true. 80s movies and early 90s movies there i mean i think uh, and maybe i'm just so nostalgic for that time Mm -hmm. in another 50 years they'll still be talking about like summer of 84 you know what i mean like they'll still like those that era of movies speaking of which et which i want to talk about in a minute okay um yeah i don't know I, i i i think our movies were 
better. I, I yeah. hate to be like that better, generational better guy. Better storytelling, but... better. Yeah, I, I get that. Oh, yeah. More important. I don't know. Yeah. Not that Rise of the Last Dragon isn't important, but there's right. so much content out there. Mm-hmm. Like, we could savor movies. Yeah. I, I, like, I'm fudging the timeline a little. Neither you and I were not born in 84, but right. like, you know, when Lion King came out, we were nine and 10. Right. Um, yeah, that's true. I mean, that is huge. Mm. That's that's a classic. Oh, yeah. Um, hmm. So E.T., yeah. by the way. So, yes. Is this the story I, that you were going to tell? This is the story I was going to tell. All right, let's yeah. do it. Um, you know, I think we did an episode about E.T. a couple years ago, several years ago. Probably. Like, I, I watched it for the first time since my childhood. Right, like, right. Like, it was one that was majorly important to me as Mm -hmm. a a youth but not one i took with me like i never rediscovered it in junior high and high school sure i did continue like i did with like back to the future or or whatever ninja turtles um so i watched it loved it and it's kind of like family lore uh in my Mm -hmm. family it's like a legend that my mom is like i knew mikey that you would be a sensitive person mm-hmm. when you cried at the end of E.T. Aww. And so she tells me, she's like, yeah, you you loved E.T. You cried at the end. It was so my little boy. Aww. And so the boys wanted to watch something different. They didn't want to watch the cartoon. Mm-hmm. And so I said, do you guys want to try E.T.? In fact, I think Amanda suggested it. Nice. She wanted to watch E.T. And it was just a Friday night movie night. We did dinner mm-hmm. and watched a movie. Um, and we watched it in two parts. We watched the first half, and then Saturday night we finished the rest of it. And Matt hurt. I didn't share the picture to social media because mm-hmm. it felt like a it felt like a private thing. But I'll, right. I'll share you the video. Okay. We're watching ET, and I'm watching the end. I'm verklempt. He's doing the be good, mm-hmm. and I turn to my son Oscar, who looks like me. Mm-hmm acts like me it was the same age as me Mm. when he saw et and he is crying at the end of et it's my favorite parenting moment that it's my favorite parenting moment god that is fucking awesome man that is it uh, it means so much it meant so much mm -hmm. uh i shared that with a couple friends and they kind of knew they were like i'm i'm getting like secondhand pride for you yeah just like, and maybe it's a little bit of selfishness, but like, we want our kids to be a little like us. We want to right. foster their own interests. We yeah. want them to be individuals and their own people. But like, when they show in certain ways that they're like you, oh, I I can only literally I can only imagine, but I can only, <laughs> yeah, I can literally yeah. only imagine how that. Like just, I I can't even fathom like what that does to it was, your. It was powerful. Yeah. It was powerful. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. And when it was over, he like you know he had like the lip quiver and nice. He wasn't like bawling, but he mm-hmm. was like wiping his eyes and like Aww. square mouth. And when it was over, I I looked at him and I was like, "Did you like it?" And he like couldn't speak. He like just like s- like cry, like shook his head, yeah. Oh, and I was like, "Can awesome. I have a hug?" And he jumped on me, and we just oh kind of like. <laughs> that's, I know that's adorable. We just like I love hugged it. for like ten seconds. Oh, it was it was beautiful. God, that's I mean, great. really sap. I'm sorry if you don't if you're listening and you don't have kids and this is like <laughs> I rollingly schmaltzy. I don't have kids, and I am eating up every moment of this. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was classic, man. Nice. I I will tell that story when Oscar is thirty something years old. God, yeah, that's I, awesome. I'll always remember that. Yeah. yeah. Ah, uh, that's great. Um, that's great. Now, now my gears are turning in my head. Like, okay, and like maybe five years, maybe maybe six or seven years, you guys will start a family podcast about movies and stuff. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna I'm going to subtly put that like idea in your brain. I'm going to incept you with that. <laughs> I don't need more podcasts, man. Uh, the, still, yeah. the one with my brother is on hiatus. <laughs> I was we'll going to ask back eventually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll be back. We're mm-hmm. we're trying to kind of rethink the format, and really, I'm focusing. I'm so focused on music, right. and YouTube, and the Kickstarter. That oh I've, yeah, I've had to. Yeah, I've had to stick a pin in a lot of things. Mm. Having me, Dustin and I. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Dustin and I are are seriously considering our uh, our Marvel podcast. Nice. I was gonna I was we'll gonna see. ask you about it. I didn't want to say it on air just in case, but yeah, I'm yeah. I'm totally totally up uh, uh, like interested in that. You know, it's tough, man. You got in. You started this podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we pretend I'm an OG, but this is your podcast. <laughs> uh, um, really? Yeah. I mean, if it wasn't yeah. for you, if, if if you and Tiny were not as integral to the equation of this, I would not still be doing this today. Well, um, I'm, yeah. I'm not fishing for compliments, no. but, but thank you. But <laughs> yeah. um, so you started this really before the wave crested of mm. podcasts. I mean, this was when it was a new, it wasn't a new format, right. but like, like press junk and it press a, junkets yeah. didn't include going on a podcast. Right. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. It was, you a got few in before years, that. Yeah. It was a few years after like, it, like the time that we started was within three years of podcasts, like like bigger name podcasts and everything, like Nerdist, like right. them still being in that kind of like, oh, I don't want to ask people to be on my podcast, like talking right. about celebrities kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Like things that were said on a podcast, like weren't breaking news yet. Right, right. Where now they are. Yeah, oh yeah. Anyway, my point mm-hmm. is I'm a little reticent I love Dustin and I love talking mm-hmm. movies with him. So why not record it for a mm-hmm. record? I, I just, not to get progressive on here, but like the world doesn't need more white dudes recording their conversation. I, and so, I totally So I'm a get little that. bit like, hey. <laughs> You're a little bit like, hey. Every time I do that, pizza freaks out and I feel so bad. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> no, I'm just like I I I'm like I would feel bad being like, mm-hmm. "Hey, here's another couple of middle-aged white dudes talking about comic book movies." I Without, I like I would love to, but yeah. there's no there's no room for it anymore. And and I get that. And I've said this before. This is this is this is Matt Hertz uh Matt Hertz uh masterclass on podcasting right now. So uh my my I think I said this on Patreon or off recording or I don't know, maybe earlier in this episode, I don't know. But my whole idea, my philosophy with podcast is with podcasting is I, like I don't care. <laughs> um, yeah, like, and I love that. Yeah, like I it has been and it has been a journey for me in the last eight years to go from taking it so seriously and taking it to a point where I wanted everything to be perfect without like, and I I wanted it to blow up. I wanted it to keep growing. I wanted it to keep like becoming a thing. And over the last like handful of years, I've just kind of reset and became more into this idea of this is me recording myself and my conversations with with my closest friends for posterity and like i don't see myself ever having kids but i love the idea that that your kids could find your episodes of this podcast totally. and yes. everyone yes. like just having that having that document is amazing and yeah i mean <laughs> and yeah i'm i'm a straight white male, a straight white cis male, <laughs> um, talking about movies and stuff. It is a a uh, a big thing of it. And, but I mean, I, that's not going to change. That that demographic of me I mean, is not going to change. It's not like saturation doesn't even begin to describe it. It's a block yeah. of salt. No. Oh yeah, there, <laughs> there white salt. In in the movie that I saw last night at the theater, together together, um, <laughs> there was a really great bit. It's about I'll talk about it here in a bit, but um, it's about um, Ed Helms and uh, a, the woman that he uh, that is sur- like a surrogate. Uh, mother for his child and it's their relationship as she's going through the pregnancy as a surrogate for him and she is talking to her um (laughs) to her co-worker at the coffee shop um and he like he is he's a gay male or maybe bisexual i'm not sure but he uh he says like you're you're creating a straight i I, i'm sure that you're creating a straight white male (laughs) and she's like oh you're right you you know i am and she does like this whole bit where she's like she's like pretending to concentrate and she's like "Mm, he just started a podcast yeah (laughs) 
<laughs> so yeah, yeah. So like that is a trope of podcasting. But again, I don't care. This is stuff that for me, I'm leaving behind whenever I die. Like I'm going to have hundreds of hours of my personality, my hot takes and everything on the internet. Um, well, okay. Yeah. So a couple of things. I, I hear you. Mm-hmm. I respect that. I believe that. I admire mm-hmm. that. As well as, I also think, again, you got in before it was mm-hmm. gauche. Um, and you kind of established a thing. So my, re- my reply, my retort mm-hmm. then, is that is my attitude about my music. Okay. Right? My music is, re- it's my hobby cranked up a little bit higher than just a hobby Mm because i share it people but i do i i really it's i i am compelled to create music and share it i i love to do that not because i think i'm doing high art but it's just my favorite thing to be like hey here look at this cool thing i did um and so that's what i do with music so with a podcast not only is it all those other things we've been talking about but i feel like if i was like hey started a marvel podcast with dustin Mm -hmm. everybody would just be like mike come on like yeah we get what so okay (laughs) you're gonna have something to pitch every day of the week now you're gonna so you're having your your that's my breda comes out on monday and obsessive viewer (laughs) comes out every other tuesday Mm -hmm. you're gonna do the marvel (laughs) podcast on wednesday you got movie night on thursday and then a YouTube video comes out on set on Friday, mm. take Saturday off, and then you're going to live stream the Bears game on Sunday. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Like, <laughs> are you are you saying that as people like that are in your social media bubble that are that are having that yes. reaction? OK, see, I, yes. I like I said, I just have this I don't approach know that where that's true. I don't think it is, honestly, like because. For the people who don't participate in those... There's got to be people out there rolling their eyes at my (laughs) incessance. Oh, yeah. Um, But the people who... Who are they? Who are they? (laughs) If you're there, speak up. Code words, watermelon, bitch. (laughs) Nice. Nice. Um, But I think you're thinking a little too hard about it because the... Well, um, come on. (laughs) Right? As I breathe. Right. But and that's your charm. But um, <laughs> but when you when you say it like that, like oh, people are saying like you have other th- like you have all of these things to pitch each week. It's I think I th- I what I believe you're getting at is that like oh, people are going to get tired of you posting your shit all the time, and it's like that is such a fleeting thing. Like someone like I'm sure that anyone on my friends list can attest to this. Anytime they see me post about obsessive viewer anthology or tower junkies or what have you. I mean, it is a, it is a scroll away. Like they, they scroll it and they scroll past it. Probably don't give it a second thought if they're not interested. And at that point, it's like, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to get, um, I'm not I'm not trying to get people to latch on to it. I'm not I, I would love to make a living at doing this. <laughs> I mean, that right. would be incredible. Patreon.com slash obsessive obsessive viewer. But um <laughs> uh, uh. but also on that same token, yes, it is it is a thing that I am putting together as entertainment for whoever wants to consume it. And on that same note, I don't like on the on the other hand with your I, I i don't know i i just i i want you and dustin to do the marvel thing <laughs> i do just blanket statement because i think that that would be yeah. good for the two of you to riff off of each other have something there that like i mean like i said like your kids can can find it at some point and be like oh this is this is this is dad and uncle dustin talking about uh like all of these movies and like imagine your kids going through the marvel cinematic universe and having these oh and then listening to these dad's episodes along yes. the way yeah that's yeah cute and comparing yeah. them to the episodes of The Obsessive Viewer where you talked about them. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I'm just a big proponent for that. I'm, I've am i become more of a proponent of people just doing – just do it. Just um, – I don't think that that remark is trademarked anywhere. But <laughs> No, nobody says no. just do it. No. I Dude, think that they, I think you've got something there. Yeah. I think that they should just do it. And I think that – and also they've got to consider that – I like that, e. yeah, <laughs> Nice. And they've also got to consider that it's not TV, it's HBO. So 
you know. Um, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's your podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sign off. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I think we're like three levels deep into a tangent. Um, should oh, we... this is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should... I really hope that people just wanted to listen to us catch up on stuff. I, I hope so, too. If not, future us, future your kids. Pizza in the future is probably listening to it, so I uh, hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, yeah, if you're if you're still listening, I love yeah. I love doing this. Oh yeah, uh, and you don't if you're not one of the people that is tired of me putting out <laughs> too much content. That code word is seedless watermelon. Yes, seedless so, watermelon. So Let's get that moving if you can. <laughs> hashtag seedless watermelon if you're if you're still listening. If you yes. like us talking about life stories oh yeah so let's dig us out of this and i do have a couple of topics i want to touch on with you because i definitely want to get i i haven't talked to you about certain things that i want to get your read on um so if you don't mind me switching over to a new topic okay okay here we go done so shaking the etch a sketch (laughs) yes so i think here in uh here in a couple of weeks uh spiral from the book of saw is coming out Um, how, like, where are you at with that? Because for context, my kind of experience with the Saw franchise, I saw the first three, didn't see the rest. And I mean, I'm, I'm kind of back and forth on whether or not I want to just dive into the whole franchise and everything. And then now we have Spiral, which is a a spinoff or a, a a different beast uh, in it. Um, and the trailer is pretty intriguing to me, I guess. But how, where are you at with Spiral and, uh, the Saw franchise proper? <clears throat> the trailer looks intriguing to me as well. I'm interested. Uh, uh, it looks like they are putting a little bit more care into it. It reminds mm-hmm. me of some of like the early or at least the first installment where it, yeah. it, <laughs> it felt like they were really going for something. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have no idea what it's about. How, yeah. you know, call giving it kind of an anthology title mm-hmm. or a legacy title. I, I don't really know what they're doing. Um I will say I did not love. Okay, what is this? Saw eight. Will this be eight? Um, I think it would be nine. Won't it? Yeah, I think it is nine. It's yeah, because I think nine. there were there were seven Saw movies, and then Jigsaw, and then now this. Right? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, seven was kind of where I felt like I was done. Okay. Uh, seven felt like, I mean, they called it the final chapter mm-hmm. and I remember leaving the theater thinking it's good. They, that's <laughs> yeah. good that they put it to bed. And I think they planned nine or 10, but like six didn't do well. So okay. they like, you know, um, made seven the last one and, and we're trying to get a few things worked out and some mm-hmm. stuff didn't pay off anyway i <clears throat> i remember not loving seven all that much okay uh, a jigsaw came out and we saw uh a uh a, 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 the the print that our theater received uh the sound was not mixed properly oh god and i'm not i, I promise i'm not the a, a guy who's like being prudish that the speakers weren't loud enough mm-hmm. i'm saying certain certain um fully uh, uh, additions and ADR like wasn't there. Oh my god! And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was weird. Some of um some of the audio was like first take audio, like on set audio rather what than like fuck? ADR. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It reminded me of the other classic one I like to talk about is when we saw the village and I we received a copy that was not like the microphones were you not saw the edited boom mics. out. Yeah. The boom mics were not edited out of the shot which I thought was like part of the movie mm-hmm. noticed <laughs> right. on DVD that that was not there mm-hmm. changed everything. Anyway. Um, so this, I, I don't know for sure. Like I didn't, I didn't discover that some theaters were getting these versions. Um, but this is clearly things were not. Wow. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe some speakers were blown, literally mm-hmm. not working in the theater, but there, right. there was stuff that sounded like it was recorded on set. Like the ADR was not there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I couldn't tell you. I don't know if that movie was any good because I could wow. not get past uh, uh, the sound design mm-hmm. on it. Um, oh, wow. <clears throat> but a 
I'm I'm into any studio horror that comes yeah. out. Uh, B, Chris Rock kind of taking a serious role in mm-hmm. it is interesting to me. Uh, and C, I, I kind of respect the franchise enough that, I, that I'm excited. I wanted to nice. see it Thursday because mm-hmm. uh, there is one showing, but it is... Jake is teaching driver's ed. Uh-huh. So we're going to see the new Guy Ritchie picture instead. And we'll see Spiral next week. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I have to watch all the movies and I don't feel like watching all the movies. I'm, have you not seen them all? I have not seen past three. Um, Cause I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not into torture porn. And I think that there's a certain level of, uh, I mean, kind of fear to watch them <laughs> because the grisliness of it, it just feels like a little bit, a little bit out of my comfort zone, but maybe I, I should watch it. To, yeah. Maybe I should watch it to develop a thicker skin for it. But yeah. 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 I'll tell you a funny story about that mm-hmm. phrase. Yeah. I don't remember how it came up, but we were in yearbook class mm-hmm. uh, and it's a small group. So I'm a little more candid with these kids I'm, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty close with these kids. Uh, shout out to any of them. If they're listening, I think they nice. think they might. Nice. Like one or two of them listens every wow. now and then. So yeah, I would be uh, very interested if they listen to any episodes that are not like with you and then <laughs> I appreciate uh, it and I everything. Don't know, but yeah. maybe, maybe they do. Maybe hey, they if do. you guys don't go check out my exclusive interview with Eminem on the <laughs> Godzilla versus Kong episode <laughs> or Kong versus Godzilla. <laughs> hey, did you, you like that one episode of Twilight Zone? What about the writing? <clears throat> because I got to tell you, <laughs> oh, God, that's actually a really cool. Get I don't know why I'm teasing about no, that. No, yeah, you know, that you it's, just, it's, it's tough, you know. Um. <laughs> um, but anyway, shout out, shout out to my yearbook class. Love you guys. <laughs> uh, you guys are graduating soon. I'll miss you. Anyway, um, so uh, we were talking about Saw. Like they brought it up. Oh, it was okay. like Halloween time, and they were talking about movies that scare them. Gotcha. And I was like, yeah, I just don't. After a while, they 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 like neglected the story and just focused on like the torture porn. And they were like, oh. like they couldn't believe I said Gen Z B word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. They to- like they didn't know that that was a, a genre, a subgenre phrase. That's interesting. And okay. They, I, I, I immediately felt so bad. I was like, they think I'm talking about porn. <laughs> And I'm like, their, oh no, their oh image no. of me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you did you sit them down and explain to them that I did. Not, okay, immediately. Thank God. Because yeah. the room was silent. Right. I mean, like the air sucked out of the room. It, 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 like everybody stopped and it was like, do we did we just wow. hear dad cuss for the first time? <laughs> right. It was I felt so bad about it. Oh, wow. I, you know, I'm <laughs> I'm like dorky, oh. silly, funny mm-hmm. at school, you know? Um, and they know I watch horror movies, but like, yeah. that's just what it's called. Right. That, that's a fairly common colloquial term. Yeah. That was coined, I'm pretty sure, in reference to, if not Saw, Hostel. Right. Um, but it just came out because that's what it was called. And they were like, huh. So I, yeah. I I think I clarified they were still a little shaken up about mm-hmm. it, but uh, wow, wow, yeah. And just think I if any of them are listening now, they've heard you say torture porn like four times. I <laughs> yeah, and I I, my brain just caught up to your Twilight Zone reference. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you had them on. Yeah, oh yeah, I had them yeah. on anthology. Um, because I don't do interview episodes like ever um right. and it's a funny story about that episode of anthology is that i recorded it with them and then within an hour of ending that interview and being done i started becoming symptomatic with covid <laughs> ah, so yeah it sucks yeah it does kind of bring it down but anyway um yeah so spiral i don't know if i'll see it um yeah yeah i will i just right we'll see um how about the conjuring averse funny you mentioned that as well Mm -hmm. seeing the trailer for that well the reason i brought it up was because the devil made me do it 
<laughs> because I should clarify, because The Conjuring Ooh. 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. Was it? Is it the third or fourth? It's three. Three, yeah. okay. Anyway. It's tough because <laughs> Annabelle 3 was, and Ed and Lorraine was at their house, oh. so that almost feels like a Conjuring. Okay. Right. Hmm. Um... Speaking of The Conjuring, so the art for our album, The Spirit of the Staircase, Mm -hmm. is a picture, one of the earliest pictures I remember of a ghost scaring me. I remember seeing it in a textbook in, like, third grade. like the uh, Not a textbook, but a book from the library. Sure. Spooky hauntings for kids or whatever. Nerd. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. Library. And uh, it was in the (laughs) last page, and I remember, like, shutting it and being scared. Anyway, so the font on that on um, all over that record it's called the gonjuring okay huh. huh which i think is a reference to ganja uh, which i am not familiar with right um but it like it's the conjuring font and they just can't obviously they can't legally use that right so little uh behind the scenes for you interesting anyway yeah Man, that's a real tangent. That's nobody cares. <laughs> it's about. movie related tangentially. At this point, people are like, "What yeah. is going on? These guys are getting loopy." Yeah. Um. You know what's funny? I'm still, I'm still more with it than I was the last the time. Last three or four episodes, or yeah. the last three or four movies of Friday the Thirteenth. Oh when we yes. Did that. That was that was an watch. epic marathon on our parts. It was. That was that was I, I wish we took that. I wish we did that in two or three parts. Oh yeah. If I could go back, I would I would have done that in two or three parts. We sped through that Yeah, images. we kind of did. And it was like right like I mean oh you were you were battling the after effects of COVID. I remember that. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I mean, it was like ten forty-five by the time we got done. Mm. My time, it just started yeah. getting late. The Conjuring, you asked anyway, about. Yes. So um, the third movie, how are you feeling about it? It's weird, man. It's weird seeing the trailer for it. It's mm-hmm. kind of weird seeing the trailers for en- anything because it's like mm-hmm. they are. We're all supposed to come out last year. Yeah. Like that new Lin Manuel Miranda movie right. that's coming out. It's In the like Heights. the event of the summer. Right. And I'm like, well. Uh, the event last of last summer, summer yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's 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 weird. It's uh, not that there have been all kinds of horror movies that have come out and like re like changed the game of what horror is since the last Conjuring movie. But I mean, a year later, I've watched a lot of stuff at home. We haven't gotten that style of thing to keep it fresh in our mind. And seeing the trailer for The Conjuring 3, mm-hmm. it felt a year late. It Interesting. felt like I would have been more interested in this a year ago. And not that it's too late, not that I'm not going to see it. I just, I didn't feel like the jazz for it that maybe I would have last year. Right. It was almost like, a, we're still getting these. Yeah. Been, you know? Which is I, weird. I hate that feeling. Oh, totally. I I kind of got tricked by the trailer because that beginning it has an interesting hook. Like it 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 is intriguing to me. The guy with the blood all over him, and then the police guy stopping him. For that's, sure, that's an interesting hook. And then something happened when I just realized, like, oh, it's it's The Conjuring. <laughs> like I don't know. Maybe is yeah. Any, Maybe an extension of that is like, okay, I haven't seen all the movies in the Conjuring universe, and I'm I'm just I don't feel compelled to go back and watch all of them. I've seen The Conjuring and uh, two of the Annabelle movies and The Nun. Um, you never saw The Conjuring two? I don't think I did. Oh no, um, that's pretty good. I think I did. I don't remember, but yeah. So I, I've and it, it, they've been okay, but I don't know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um, speaking of, uh, I don't know hey, how to transition. How long yeah. do you want to go on this episode? That's a good question. How long do you want to go? Do you have a hard out at all? I don't have a hard out, okay. but it is past my bedtime. Okay. We can kind of maybe, do. Maybe 10 more minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Totally. Okay. That's actually right. perfect. We've been going, according to the board, we've been going an hour and a half, so we're good. Um. Okay. And 
bringing us back in. I'm going to mark that. <laughs> <here>. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So I saw together together. Um, and are is this movie on your radar at all, or not even a little? Okay. No, I I had not heard about it until you said that you were seeing it okay and that's kind of where i was at with it um it was one of those things where it was just like oh this is a movie that's playing i like the actors in it so uh i'll check it out i had no other context for it and honestly i mean it it is kind of a i mean it's like an indie drama about these two people and it's it's kind of has those um those indie conventions and everything um but it has a lot of charm to it so i'll just go ahead and kind of run it down as a potpourri segment here um that i should have had propped up on my phone but i uh-huh. didn't so now i am left to vamp a little bit but um the interesting thing about it is that at the beginning of the movie, like before the movie started, um, and I've seen this like on the festival circuit and stuff, and I've seen this in certain certain movies and everything, but this felt a little bit more special because there was a kind of an in- like before the movie started, after the trailers, um, after the AMC, like oh, welcome back to the movies thing. Um, there was a pre-recorded video of the director, the writer and director, uh, like at her home and saying like, Hey, I just want to say thank you guys for coming out to the movie theater and seeing my movie. And it just means a lot that you actually, uh, that it is playing in a movie theater and that you've chosen to make your return to the movie theater to see my movie. It just means a lot. It was very heartfelt, very beautiful. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And then she said, after the movie, there's going to be a Q and a with, uh, like obviously pre-recorded um, Q and a with, with her and the two actors, uh, Ed Helms and Patty Harrison. Um, so I thought that was interesting and I actually stayed, stayed after and watched it. But anyway, the movie, um, the plot summary courtesy of IMDb, it's called Together Together. Um, when a young loner becomes the gestational surrogate for a single man in his 40s, the two strangers come to realize this unexpected relationship will challenge their perceptions of connection, boundaries, and the per- uh, particulars of love. Uh, the movie stars Ed Helms and Patty Harrison and is written and directed by Nicole Beckwith. And uh, so, yeah, I, I watched it and it was a very, very charming and, and sweet movie that I, I was so I felt so refreshed by it because it is that, like I said, it's kind of this indie drama kind of thing that I've seen in a million things, a million For things sure. of this, this thing. But what sets Together Together apart is that it's not a romantic relationship story by any stretch. Um, it is what I found so refreshing and charming about it is that it is about this, this platonic love that blooms between these two people, like this just genuine, like love for one another that isn't marred by any romantic connections or emotional attachment that has romantic underpinnings. It's all just this platonic, just respect and and admiration and, and kind of emotional, emotionally platonic dependence upon each other to be in their lives. Um, and I just found that to be very, just very beautiful and, and very beautifully portrayed. Like the different like uh, dramatic moments throughout the movie, they kind of just, they come about organically. Like something as simple as Ed Helms, like <laughs> finding out that uh, Patty Harrison's character is like sleeping with someone and it's not that he's jealous or anything. It's that, like, you have my baby inside you. <laughs> like, like he gets weirded out by that and everything. And that becomes the mm-hmm. the point of contention with them. And they work it out. They talk about it. They talk it out and everything. And then just the bond that forms is really beautiful. And Ed Helms and Patty Harrison are phenomenal in it. Like, their performances are great. So, yeah, that's Together Together. I liked it. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Uh then my offering for mm-hmm. potpourri, I'll skip Raya and the Last Dragon, which was the last right. thing I watched, <laughs> yeah. uh, is I'll talk a little bit about Nomadland, if I could kind of oh, go yes. back Best to picture that. winner. The, the best picture of 2020, mm. uh, which I thought was interesting. So yeah. I really enjoyed the movie. We um, It was one of those ones where about halfway through, Jake and I kind of turned to each other and we're like, this is good. Like, we kind of give nice. each other that confirmation. Like, oh, nice. this, is, this is awesome. Um, and so it really was, my gosh, the performances. Francis McDermott is unreal she's oh, just unreal yeah. i i uh, uh am not a um why can't i think of her name 
the most decorated Oscar winner? Um. Oh, uh, Meryl Streep fan. Meryl Streep. Oh yeah. my god. I, I, I'm not anti Meryl Streep. Mm-hmm. I don't. <laughs> I don't mean for it to come out that way. Right. She is great, but mm-hmm. like I haven't followed. I don't go to see movies because Meryl Streep is in it. Right. Um. But man, Francis is maybe is as good, mm-hmm. if not better, in some of the stuff she's in. And this was, oh. I don't know how much of it was scripted uh, Mm -hmm. and how much of it was. I mean, it's almost faux documentary style. There's no like pretense that it is documentary, but um, a lot of those people, aside from her, David Strathairn, Mm -hmm. maybe a couple of other characters that were kind of uh, um, ancillary. Mm -hmm. I think they were all real people. That I I think that that's, that's, I I think you're right on the money there. And I think that that's kind of Chloe Zhao's kind of thing. Um, okay. Because her previous movie, I, this is the only movie of hers that I've seen, but her previous movie was, I think, The Writer, and it has that same kind of thing. Like, um, Interesting. Most, most, if not all of the cast are like not actors; they're just they're just regular people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and especially kind of the three uh, 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 bigger side characters are the 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 leader of the group that mm-hmm. meets. Uh, and then her two friends. Yeah. Um, it's been a while shoot, since I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, I can't. I can't remember their names. Um, and they were f- so fantastic and so yeah. gripping. And I've read a couple of gr- uh, of reviews, uh, kind of explaining like who this movie isn't for. Like, mm-hmm. if you don't really care about old people talking about their problem, <laughs> it's not for you. Sure. And I would have guessed that that's not for me. But mm. man, they were such real characters, which yes. is just they're real characters, but right. conversations seem so real. Mm-hmm. You genuinely cared for them. Um, I described the movie as Into the Wild. Interesting. Um, with less of a narrative uh, and a, 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 a smidge of positivity. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if he had grown up and kind of realized uh, that he was wrong. Okay. Um, but man, that, that story, that idea that somebody would just kind of like shun, um, you know, traditionalism mm. and normal life and become this vagabond. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah. The, th- the thing <clears throat> that I really latched onto with Nomadland was the, kind of just the incredibly uh, profound and pervasive sense of loss of the character. Um, yeah. Because I, I like, it just, it just really clicked with me the way that she was not so much trying to reclaim a sense of community, but she was in search of a sense of community, but it just the trauma of losing everything like in, in such a way yeah. that I, I can't fathom it is just, it was just so, so incredible to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, and also tied with, you kind of almost get the sense that, um, maybe this is just my read of it, but like, this hmm. is also kind of just who she is anyway. Oh, interesting. Maybe. Right. I like her hmm. sister, which if there's any one part I didn't love about it, felt a little too like storytell it, like the movie asking me to buy into something rather than just showing me. Yeah. It's like her sister, like giving her money to get back on. You know, that was a little, I, I only uh, vaguely remember that, but yeah, it's good and it's fine, but it, it, it was my probably my least favorite scene. Um, she was like, you know, you were always kind of different growing up and we were okay with that. And you know, when your husband died and you just stayed in empire, Mm -hmm. Uh, so she is kind of just a wanderer even before her entire home is gone Mm -hmm. Um, interesting so yeah there's a real there's a real blend of tone there I think as she's kind of driving off at the end there's a Mm -hmm. great sadness a great loneliness but there's also and maybe I just read it this sense of it's just who she is Mm mm-hmm you That's know, interesting. She has multiple chances mm-hmm. um, to settle down, mm-hmm. and she doesn't. 
Yeah, I can definitely see that. I'll have to I'll have to revisit it. I I kind of thought about doing a commentary track for it for Patreon, but I I don't know if I want to commit to that. But um, I'll definitely have to rewatch it. Um, I it really doesn't like it when I give me. It was good. It didn't give me like any feelings of oh man, did I miss out on the best pictures this year? Oh right. I don't. It was. We've talked about this. And, yeah. And we're kind of winding down here at the end, mm-hmm. but least interested i've ever been in the oscars yeah i did we didn't even watch the whole thing did you so you um, watched some of it yeah we started it oh, okay. we watched maybe an hour of it what'd you th- what'd you think of it? i didn't watch it. i still have not watched any of it like it was i just hard couldn't. to watch really it was hard to watch yeah, yeah yeah and 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 all respect to the format i mean i i for all its faults and there are many i still love the oscars mm. i love the celebration the pomp and circumstance yeah which is weird because i kind of resist a lot of that stuff but whatever. sure um but this just was so not that that kind of really brought out a lot of what i don't like about it which mm-hmm. is just like none of this is real right it's all i'm getting so here we are oh if anybody doesn't have their talking about politics <laughs> <laughs> bingo square spot. on their yeah. bingo chart um I, i'm pretty not so much at school but i'm pretty publicly pro liberal <laughs> if you want yeah <laughs> i'm I, i'm pretty publicly progressive minded mm-hmm. i don't call myself a liberal yeah um but you're man, pretty progressive I, you're saying you're saying the word porn in front of your students so. that's true yeah that's a good point yeah yeah <laughs> Jeez. Um, but I'm all, I'm, I'm, gosh, this this is going to sound bad to say. I think now that I'm not like constantly anxious about Trump, Mm -hmm. I'm also getting a little annoyed with liberals. It's a little much. Yeah. It's a little much guys. Mm -hmm. You are also kind of annoying. Like they're often mean and evil and wrong. Mm Mm-hmm. And you're like obvious and annoying and mm-hmm. a bit much. That and and I don't mean to make this a tangent because this was something that I brought up on a previous episode. But there was a there was a whole thing where Tim Allen, um, he said something on a podcast or in an interview about how oh I I just like the way that Trump pissed everyone yeah, off. Yeah, Mark Maron, I listened yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. like people got all up in arms about that. Which you know, okay, yeah, if you don't like his opinion. Go nuts. I hate that opinion. I think that that's a shitty, shallow opinion right. and everything. Yes. But the thing that I didn't like was seeing like all of the like super liberal sound pieces on Twitter, like not not reacting to that, but instead bringing up like, oh, well, this guy, Tim Allen was arrested in the 70s for uh, for drugs and everything. And he was in prison and showing like his mugshot and stuff. And I'm like, like he's he's been like publicly he's spoken about how he is like 23 <laughs> years sober and stuff and like yeah, you're know. fucking bringing up like this stuff and i'm like I know, what the I know. fuck is wrong with you yes, yes. Yeah. yeah so it's just it's uh, yeah ugh. you know i think one of um i'm so relieved that i don't have to worry about trump every day mm-hmm. that i kind of shift back to like being pretty equally annoyed with all sides of politics and yeah. just the ridiculousness of yes. so much of it. And so many people just think they have so much stuff figured out. Yeah. And I just like, we have been sentient on this planet for so yes. long and we still haven't figured out abortion. Right. So you don't have the answer. Yeah. Oh yeah. You don't, we're just not going to yeah. figure it out. Yeah. I, <laughs> I shared, I shared something on Facebook that was really shitty today <laughs> and I don't, I don't know how you, if you saw it or how you felt about it. Um, but cause I know, I know your stance on like the problem of, people like like it being an educational problem in terms of like people being so far up their asses with stuff to put it lightly but i posted (laughs) i was just so agitated with a certain kind of argument and everything this can be the last thing we can wrap up so you can go to bed Uh, yeah but uh i posted (laughs) i said um uh oh check out the like i found this really cool venn diagram of people who barely graduated high school and how they overlap with people uh who think that they have like any uh like they have um 
they ha- they're in a position to question the science behind the vaccine and roll out. And it was just a big fucking circle. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah. Because I just, I just, I get so fucking annoyed with that. Like it's uh, just like, who, who are you to think, Oh, I think that they rolled it out too fast or, or I don't trust that they did this. It's like, yeah, you, there are scientists like it, it is science. Like it's not something that just came on the market that they just threw out there willy nilly. Like there are studies and everything. It was approved. Ah! Right. Anyway. I know. So, yeah, I know. I think um, to kind of make my last point, mm-hmm. the thing that's frustrating me a lot lately, like if I do get upset or anxious about it um, is our discourse now, mm-hmm. which I think is the result of the internet. I yeah. think it's because of social media. This great gift, literally the entire history of information is at our fingertips. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just argue with each other. And I think the internet has allowed people to believe that like arguing over something, like having a disagreement mm-hmm. is is doing thought like they think right. that that's doing politics mm. they think that that arguing is making change right and it's just not I, like no again not to bring up abortion again mm-hmm. uh but i have banned in my classes uh my specifically my journalism class like mm-hmm. we, i don't talk about it anymore yeah not because i'm offended not because students are offended but because i can't bear to listen to what 16 year olds have to say about it anymore right and this is coming from a teacher where like my position is to respect the opinion of teenagers. Mm -hmm. I I love hearing what they have to say, but I am so tired of people thinking just speaking loudly about a subject means you're you're like doing politics. Right. Like this side thinks abortion is wrong. This side thinks people should leave it alone. And I'm like, guys, we all just want fewer unwanted pregnancies. Right. How, yeah. how do you, why do you think you're making change? Ugh, what are you doing? Yeah. The media. Ugh, ugh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm no, doing no, the no, thing. Good. But this is what the internet wants. Yeah. They want us to yell at each other mm-hmm. loudly while the billionaires count their billions. Yeah. Well, I think you're wrong about that. And I am going to, I don't know. <laughs> Man, that got, I didn't mean to get that, uh, I don't know, passionate, passionate? Oh, it was beautiful. It was great. Um, yeah. Okay, so we should wind down because um, I have to go back to where I had a four-day weekend and, oh, God, Ooh. it was it was much needed. It was very, yeah, very beautiful. Um, very, very, like, lightning round, final thoughts. Uh, Venom <laughs> trailer. Uh, how'd you feel about this Venom trailer? In, like, <sighs> five words or less. <laughs> oh, I don't know that I could do five words. Uh, the <laughs> first trailer, I think, of Venom a couple of years ago pitched mm-hmm. that as a serious movie and the mm-hmm. movie turned out to be kind of silly and stupid. Uh, and this trailer looks to be silly and stupid mm-hmm. and I didn't really enjoy the movie. I think it's fine for what it was, but um, <laughs> this might be betraying some things I've said in the past, but like mm-hmm. as a purist of the narrative, mm-hmm. it's I, I'm not as interested in the character without the Spider-Man character. Tie. Yeah. Yeah. Without that, it, it's it's not as interesting to me. Yeah. It's not bad. I'm not saying change is wrong. They can do whatever they want. It's a property. They're not they're not making movies for me anymore. Mm. I'm out of the demographic. Who cares? Um, but I am just not interested, and I, I think I have that right to not be interested. Right. I'm kind if, of the same way. Spider Man's not involved. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. I don't really rem- I remember thinking the first movie was like surprisingly not horrible (laughs) Um, and watching the trailer for this one i'm like i've already forgotten more about that movie than i than the i've forgotten more about the first movie than i have the capacity to be excited for the second one if that makes any sort of sense i i um I know on a movie review podcast, this this might not work, but <laughs> talking again about my students, one of the things I've mm-hmm. said to them a lot, especially this year, is mm-hmm. like practice feeling vanilla about yeah. it. Yeah. You don't have to have a hot take or an opinion about something. <laughs> I called out a student today, kind of <laughs> lighthearted, but I was mm-hmm. like, I don't think you feel medium about anything. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I was uh, uh, like, people will, they're like, pineapple on pizza. Ugh. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> when it comes to pizza, the only strong opinion I have mm -hmm. is who cares? Whatever. Yeah. Oh, Whatever yeah. You want. Same here. The only. Whatever. Yeah. I actually tried pineapple on pizza for the first time, I think, ever. And it was fine. Um, but also, the only opinion I have about pizza is that it's cuddly and, preci and precious. Um, <laughs> and just a little baby. <laughs> I do have strong feelings about cats. Thanks yes. for listening to Obsessive right. Viewer Podcast. Yes, check out Mike's uh, Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> as good as it gets, music.com. Yes. Kickstarter.com slash as good as it gets. Beautiful. As good as it gets. I would love it. I would love it if you came by. You don't even have to spend the $10. You could just give me $2 to say, hey, mm -hmm. I like you. Nice. Also, the Patreon is still a thing. Yes. We're up to like nine songs, something like that. Nice. We got a new one coming out in probably two weeks. Sweet. Um, so. Very the band, cool. as good as it gets. Sweet. And I will compile all of these links and put them in the show notes. Go and support Mike's work in his music and everything, please. Thank that is you, my thank that you, is my you. that is my um my command to all of you guys listening. So love it. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, Mikey. Well, I love you. It's been fun. Ooh, it's so nice to it. to talk to you through all of these tangents and everything. <laughs> and you uh, guys Yes. When you listen to an episode with me, <laughs> you go into the woods. It is it is it is a staple of the Obsessive Viewer podcast and its subsidiary podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah. all right. Well I'm gonna play the jingle and everything. I don't know if I I actually don't know if I can play like I'm gonna try to play it to where the outro is outside of our listening, but we'll see. Anyway. Um thank you guys so much for listening. This has been the Obsessive Viewer. Once again, check out Mike's work at as good as it gets music.com. And, uh, yeah, and thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. And now, here's a short clip from our Patreon-exclusive RSS feed. To hear the full clip and more exclusive Patreon content, go to patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer and become a patron at the minimum rate of $1 per month. Thank you and enjoy. There's like a subset of fans who, of really anything, who take that like holier than thou, like obnoxious, like I know more than you and that makes me better than you kind of approach to anything mm -hmm. in regards to their chosen fandom. And it's like, it's a piece of media, guys. <laughs> like, right. ugh. like the people who are butthurt over Ghostbusters. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like I still get just so irritated anytime anyone brings up the 2016 ghostbusters it's like it was a movie like, right it, it's not gonna fucking kill you that women yeah. were in ghostbusters it was fine <laughs> yeah yeah um also original ghostbusters i could take or leave it honestly really? yeah. yeah i don't really give a shit <laughs> well what the fuck yeah. is wrong with you well i don't know i guess i don't have a dick <laughs> whatever the bill Murray line is that's true this man has no dick which yeah. I, actually is a really good line it is yeah the Obsessive Viewer podcast is edited and produced by Matt Hurt and presented by ObsessiveViewer.com. For a full archive of our episodes, go to ObsessiveViewer.com slash OV archive. You can also like our Facebook page and join the OV Facebook group at Facebook.com slash The Obsessive Viewer. And follow us on Twitter at Obsessive Viewer and at Obsessive Tiny. And follow our recurring co-hosts at I am Mike White, that's me, at R.A. Fekis and at Burger underscore Lurker. If you enjoy the show, please take a couple minutes to leave us a rating and a quick review on Apple Podcasts. This is the easiest way to support what we do, and all it costs is a little bit of your time. If you'd like to donate to the podcast, you can make a PayPal donation at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate. Or support us on Patreon for recurring donations and access to commentary tracks and B-roll audio recorded exclusively for patrons at patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer. Every donation goes toward paying the fees to keep the podcast running and is greatly appreciated. For official Obsessive Viewer merch, including shirts, mugs, phone cases, and more, visit our Tee Public store. You can find a link to the store in the show notes of this episode and at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate. Or you can simply search for Obsessive Viewer at teepublic.com, T-E-E, public.com. For information about our annual live event showcasing short horror films from local filmmakers, check out shocktoberinirvington.com. 
And for an archive of all our events, as well as news about potential future events, head over to obsessiveviewer.com slash live. For more podcast content, you can find Anthology, Matt's solo podcast covering The Twilight Zone, and other classic and contemporary science fiction anthology TV shows at anthologypod.com and on Twitter at OVAnthologyPod. You can also find Tower Junkies, a podcast where Matt and Tiny share their love of all things Stephen King and his magnum opus, The Dark Tower series, at TowerJunkiesPod.com and at TowerJunkiesPod on Twitter. And finally, check out The Secular Perspective, Tiny's side project podcast, which tackles current events and life's big questions from the perspective of secular hosts Chad and Amanda at thesecularperspective.com. The theme music for The Obsessive Viewer comes courtesy of the band Loudlike from their EP, Mistakes We Must Make. Additional bumper music is provided courtesy of As Good As It Gets, which can be found at facebook.com slash asgoodasitgetsband. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Kitty! Kitty!